Uh, a better class of examples maybe are the quadric surfaces. And I'm not going to tell you the general definition of these quite yet. Uh, I'll go through that in class. But let's just talk about the simplest example, which we've already seen. Namely, a sphere. So let me write down a sphere, say, x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z squared equals 4. Well, I've already told you this is a sphere with center 1, 2, 0, and radius equal to 2. And, well, we sort of know that from the distance formula and those kinds of ideas, but we can think about it in another way by looking at these ideas of, of slicing this surface. So now I'm going to look at this, this equation by holding the z value constant at a bunch of different values and see what, what shape you get. So if I start out by seeing what happens when I hold z equal to 0, this equation turns into x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. So on the xy plane, this is nothing other than the circle with center 1, 2, and radius 2. So here's a drawing of that. And what happens when I set z equal to 1, for example? The equation up here turns into x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus 1 equals 4, or just moving, subtracting the 1 to the other side, you get 3, and now we have a circle of, with center, 1, 2, and radius square root of 3. So let me rewrite this equation again. We saw that for z equals 0, we get, we get a circle with center 1, 2, and radius 2 at z equals 1. This gives you a circle with center 1, 2 again. And now we have radius square root of 3. When z equals 2, something strange sort of happens. You get uh, x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. And now we're setting z equal to 2, so we get 2 squared equals 4. The equation we get is this. So we have y minus one, x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 0. Uh, we have uh, a non-negative thing plus a non-negative thing equals zero. The only way that can happen is if the two things are zero. Namely, this says x has to equal one and y has to equal two. So, so slicing z um, or slicing the surface at the value z equals two, we just get a single point. So z equals 2 gives us the single point one comma two. Well, so I've done I've set z equal to zero, one, and two, and in the first two cases we get circles, and the third case we just get this single point. 
maybe I should do one more when I set z equal to 1.5, going through the same sort of thing, you get x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 1.75, and that's roughly 1.32 squared. So we get a circle with center one two and radius one point three two well so we've seen setting z equal to various different values we get these circles and in one case we get a point so now let's try to graph that in three dimensions So let's see, all of this is happening at the point one, two, zero. And so when z was zero, we had this circle of radius two, which kind of looks like that. When z equals one, so we're up at a height of one. So I'll go from this point up a height of one. We get this circle of radius square root of three kind of looks like that. If we go up to 1.5, we get a circle with a different radius. And if we go all the way up to 2, we get this single point, and that's the top of the sphere. So plotting those, plotting what we get for three, three or four different values of z, we see we get this dome. If we had done some negative z values, we would fill out the bottom. And hopefully this convinces you that we do indeed get the sphere. But this, this illustrates a more general idea of, of setting one variable equal to a constant value for a bunch of different constant values and see what you get. So another way you could try to do this problem is to, is to set x equal to a bunch of different values. So you could see what happens when x is 0, x is 1, x is 2, and so forth. So in this case, what do we get? Um, we get 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z squared equals 4. So we get y minus 2 squared plus z squared equals 3. So if I draw the yz plane, this is a circle with center 2 comma 0 and radius square root of 3. So something like that. Let me do x equal to 1. When I set x equal to 1, I get, well, the, all the x stuff goes away. And I get this equation, which is a circle with center 2, 0, and radius 2. And if I set x equal to 2, I get another equation similar to the first one. Oh, it's not just similar, it's the same. So let me try to plot these different things. So when x equals 0, I'm looking at values that aren't moved forward at all. I get a circle on the y, z plane with center 2, 0 and, and radius square root of 3. If I move forward to x equals 1, I get this bigger circle. And if I move forward to x equals 2, I get the same circle as before, but I'm, I move forward. So it looks sort of like this. And if I even moved one more, I would get this single point thing again. I would be out at 
um, x equals 3. So let me write that. When x equals 3, I'll have 2 squared plus all of that. So when x is 3, you're forced to have y equal to 2 and z equal to 0. So that puts us kind of here, and we get that single point. So if I, I had if I had done more of these plots, you'd get more circles going through here, and you'd sort of fill out um, the shape of this sphere. But this time, we've sort of looked at it in the other direction by picking specific x values. 